details of uh, OGenesis. You will find that uh, in OGenesis, we are going to talk about meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 and some change of chromosome numbers as well. In the beginning, we have a primordial germ cell, which is a diploid cell with two units of DNA. But then as it is going to enter meiosis, it must duplicate the DNA. You see, primordial germ cell give you ogonium, and during that process is mitosis happening. But beyond that is starting the meiosis. So, so cell which enters meiosis is uh, the primary oocyte. Now, if you say primary oocyte is the cell which enters meiosis 1, it will give us the secondary oocyte. And the secondary oocyte will then enter meiosis 2 to give us the mature oocyte. Along with that, your oocyte will also have the polar bodies. Now, what we want to talk about is, notice, that as we are uh, having this deployed status here, which is uh, 2m and 2m, the small n is the number of chromosome, and the capital N is the amount of DNA. Since it is mitosis, nothing is going to change in ugonium. So, ugonium it remains the same because the process is uh, mitosis here. But then this ugonium wants to enter the meiosis and it has to duplicate the DNA. As it is duplicating the DNA, you see it has become 4N. So 2N has become 4N now. You can find out that when there is a duplication of DNA, the deployed status is same, but the amount of DNA is doubled. Now, as you move further, this is the cell, which is called as the primary oocyte, is the one which is going to enter meiosis 1, where paternal and paternal chromosomes are separating. Now, as they are separating, what do you think is the status of the secondary oocyte or the first polar body? If you are looking at the secondary oocyte or the first polar body, they must be haploid. Now, if you are telling they are haploid, you can notice they are not only haploid, but having two units of DNA. So, this primary oocyte, when it is undergoing meiosis 1, it is giving us the secondary oocyte. Those secondary oocytes are obviously haploid, but with two units of DNA. And that is now undergoing meiosis 2. As it is undergoing meiosis 2, you will notice sister chromatids are separating. And when the sister chromatids are separating, ultimately the gamete, which we are talking about, is haploid, of course, but with one unit of DNA. So finally, what you get is a gamete, which is having haploid status, but one unit of DNA. This is the diagram which we are supposed to draw now. So let us start with the primordial germ cell here. This primordial germ cell is going to give us the ugonium. And uh, understand that this primordial germ cell, which is 2N, 2N, having one chromosome from the mother's side and one chromosome on the father's side. So, primordial germ cell, which is a diploid cell with two units of DNA, one unit of DNA coming from mother and one unit of DNA coming from father. So nothing will change if there is mitosis going on to give us the ugonium. So, ugonium will have the same status. You will find that even the ugonium is 2n, 2n there. Because we understand that the process is uh, mitosis and mitosis is the uh, equational division. Now this ugonium is uh, further getting ready for to enter the meiosis and it will form what is called as primary oocyte. Now when you say it is going to form primary oocyte, what happens is during that process, there will be DNA duplication. 
So when you're telling there is a DNA duplication, it is happening during the interphase or the resting stage. So during the resting stage interphase, there will be DNA duplication and now you have duplicator chromosomes. You can mention them here. Now we are going to have duplicator chromosome. If you say these are the duplicated chromosome, you mean to say there will be sister chromatids now? Yes, they are called as sister chromatids. Let me magnify it here, you see. Sister chromatids are evident and uh, there is uh, double DNA. If you say there will be double DNA, can I mention it here? Of course, but it is now 4 so that 2N has become 4N before it enters the meiosis 1. Now, this primary oocyte, as it is moving further, it is going to enter the meiosis 1. It requires something called as LH surge. So, primary oocyte must be exposed to LH surge. After LH surge, it will become the secondary oocyte. So let us draw the secondary oocyte as well. As you see, what we get now is the secondary oocyte. But along with the secondary oocyte, you will also get the first polar body. So there will be a polar body here and that is the first polar body. In meiosis 1, because the maternal and paternal chromosomes are going to separate, you will see the next cells are haploid. So, you will mark them here. Either maternal chromosome will come here or paternal. 50% chance that this could be maternal or paternal. Similar there. So, these are haploid cells now and you can mark their DNA configuration. You can notice that there will be haploid with two units of DNA. So, 4N has become 2M. Because there is the maternal paternal chromosome separating, this 4N becomes 2M. And now the secondary oocyte will enter meiosis 2. As the secondary oocyte is entering the meiosis 2, you will find that it is undergoing ovulation. So secondary oocyte enters meiosis 2 and undergoes ovulation. As it is uh, now waiting for the sperm, <coughs> the sperm must fertilize the secondary oocyte within 24 hours. If it does not fertilize the secondary oocyte within 24 hours, then the secondary oocyte is degenerated and menstruated by the end of the cycle. Now, let us say that it was fertilized. What will you get next? Next, what I get is the mature oocyte. And what else along with the mature oocyte? I get the second polar body. Polar body number 2. You see, this is meiosis 2, where the sister chromatids are going to separate. Then, you can show them. Here, the sister chromatids have now separated. If you say sister chromatids have separated now during meiosis 2, this remains a haploid cell, but the unit DNA is only one unit. So finally, you will find that we have got N and N. That 2N has become M, and this is also N and N. So these are haploid cells, basically. These are going to be the haploid cells with one unit of DNA, and uh, that is the same story there. Now remember, this mature oocyte is actually a fertilized oocyte. Why would you say that it is fertilized oocyte? Because I see that there is a sperm nucleus in the cytoplasm. Now if you say this is the sperm nucleus in the cytoplasm, what will happen when this sperm nucleus reach the center? Then it will become zygote. So, mature oocyte is actually a fertilized oocyte and 
the nucleus is in the cytoplasma. Once it reaches the center, it becomes zygote. So, what will be the status of a zygote then? Half the chromosome are already there in mother, and half will be brought by the father. So, it will be NM, and that is NM. If you say sperm is also bringing N and N, then what is the final scenario for a zygote? The zygote must become 2N and 2N, and that 2N, 2N is uh, a normal cell in our body. See, zygotes divides and give any cell in the body, which is maybe the skin cell, muscle cell, bone cell, hair cell, or whichever cell, including, including this uh, primordial germ cell also. So primordial germ cell is a diploid cell like any cell in the body, maybe skin cell, muscle cell, bone cell, and uh, coming from zygote. One set of chromosome from mother and one set of chromosome from father. Sperm brings some one set and oocyte already will have one set. So that is how the diploid status was achieved. Also remember, this is the second polar body. It is released after fertilization. The second polar body is released after fertilization and the first polar body is released after and let's search but before ovulation now as you're telling that first polar body is released after LH search but before ovulation when is LH search taking place is a question and you can remember it is approximately 36 hours before ovulation now, if you say the LH search is occurring 36 hours before ovulation when is the first polar body released at LH peak and when is the LH peak LH peak is the LH peak is approximately 12 hours before ovulation if you say LH peak is 12 hour before ovulation that is the time when the first polar body will be released and let's move on to the next uh, detailed diagram now for the same information. But there is a question before that. It is asking us wrong statement regarding oogenesis. We have seen first polar body is released at ovulation. Actually, it is before ovulation. But some books will say at ovulation, no problem here. Then what about the second polar body? Second polar body is released after fertilization so this is a wrong statement and that is our answer because the second polar body is released after fertilization so this is going to be wrong what about the primary oocyte is it is a diploid cell yes it is a diploid cell and it is the largest cell and it is 46 xx because the female you are talking about oogenesis so xx and the cell which undergoes the ovulation is the secondary oocyte? Of course. It's the secondary oocyte that will undergo ovulation and will fertilize by the sperm. So we we'll keep our answer as choice number B there. Now, keeping your answer there, you will move further and you are going to talk about the menstrual cycles and more details because there are questions on that. Notice that there is the plotting of LH hormone concentration. In this diagram menstrual cycle begins day number one of the last menstrual period and day number 28 it is ending and which cycle day number 14 is the day of ovulation just before the ovulation there will be a sudden increase in the LH hormone concentration which is called LH surge then there will be LH peak the highest concentration just before ovulation and then the level of the LH hormone will descend down. Let us make this diagram. In this diagram, we will also notice there is a fertile period and that is uh, 3 days. In total of 28 days, the fertile period is to be discussed. Let's make this diagram now. As you are making this diagram, you will have to draw the menstrual cycle here. And it is starting day number 1 and till day number 28 and what is happening at day number 14 
At day number 14, we have the ovulation taking place. And uh, what about the concentration of the LH hormone? As we're talking about the LH hormone concentration, it will have a sudden increase and the dip also before ovulation itself. And what is that sudden increase called? That sudden increase is the LH surge. And when is the LH surge occurring? The LH surge, as we have discussed earlier, is approximately 36 hours before ovulation. Now, if you say LH surge is approximately 36 hours before ovulation, then when is the LH peak? LH peak is here. If you say this is the LH peak, which is approximately 12 hours before ovulation, that is the time first polar body is released. So first polar body is released just before ovulation and it is 12 hours before ovulation. And when is the second polar body released? After fertilization. And when is the fertilization happening? Within 24 hours of the ovulation. You have to remember that the lady should have the zygote by day number 15. So day number 15, she should have zygote? Yes, because she has a window period of only one day. So there is a window period of one day. Once she has ovulation, she must have fertilization within one day. And on day number 15, there must be the zygote available. Fertilization should occur within 24 hours of the ovulation. Fine. Then you will have the second polar body released? Yes. The second polar body is released. Polar body 2 is released, but after fertilization. Because if fertilization does not occur, the secondary oocyte will be degenerated after 24 hours and menstruated by the end of the cycle. If you say so, if there is the sperm ejaculated in female, what is the time duration it is potential of fertilization? So sperms once ejaculated in female are capable of fertilization for 48 hours. Now this is one question. Sperm are capable of fertilization of till 48 hours. What is the survival time of sperm in the female? That's a different question. They can survive 5 to 10 days in female. But that is a different question altogether. Capable of fertilization is only for 2 days. Now, let us assume the sperm was inside the female on day number 12 or maybe day number 13 or maybe day number 14. So sperm ejaculated on day number 12, 13 or 14, there is a chance that a baby will come, the zygote will come. So for a male, for a male, the two days are fertile period. So for a male, it is two days and for a female, it is one day. So there are three days which are fertile period. These three days are considered as the fertile period. And what if it is before that the sperm was ejaculated? No baby. And what if it is after that? No baby. So you will not have a baby if the sperms were ejaculated before day number 12 or after day number 15. The fertile period is only these three days.